introduction. So yeah, I'm from HSC, and today I'm going to present one of our outbreak investigation study at a large um, meat processing plant in England to understand the virus transmission risk and control. Um, our study is part of the much bigger uh, program called PROTECT National Core Study to understand the association between the environment and virus transmission. And it is one of the six national core studies funded by UK government to support the immediate response to the uh, pandemic. And um, this program was led by HSC Chief Scientific Advisor, uh, Professor Andrew Curran, and I led uh, uh, theme one, the outbreak investigation theme. So theme one has two parts. One is rapid on the ground investigation of outbreaks, as well as linking national level data. And at the very beginning of the pandemic, we were able to link national data to identify uh, like manufacturing, uh, settings, food manufacturing settings and warehousing workplace settings have a higher rate of outbreak. But at that time, there was no systematic data collections to help us to understand the transmission risk. And also, there were no study that really can have real world observation and measurements closer to the time of the outbreak. So we develop and publish the, our COVID out study protocol by combining the World Health Organization early COVID-19 investigation protocols and then apply to the UK situation. We also develop our data collection framework based on lesson learned from previous pandemic. And uh, we have already published three outbreak investigations in different workplace settings. And today I'm looking at are presenting our experience in investigating an outbreak in the meat processing. So our study is called the COVID out study, and we apply the same protocol across 20 outbreak side investigations. And today I'm presenting the investigation in the meat processing plan in June 2021. And we have a system developed to receive notifications of workplace outbreaks. Um, we received the notification notifications in June in a secondary meat processing plant in England um, that produced 1.5 million meat products in a week and have 1,500 workers. And the attack rate is 4.1%. And as soon as we have the notifications, we approach the employers to ob obtain informed consent. We were able to access the company data. We also can access to the workplace to conduct observational assessments of the work activities and control measures with real-time environmental measurements, including measuring noise level, um, carbon dioxide level, which is indicators of effectiveness of the ventilation, as well as temperature, humidity. We also conduct service microbial sampling of the SARS RNA to understand the level of contamination. And we use these systematic methods to understand the risk factors and control uh, measures, considering all routes of transmission. And you can see here, w uh, the bar is the number of infectious cases in this workplace. And the line is the infection rate in the local community. And you can see the workplace outbreaks occurred when the community infection rate has started to increase when the, the emergence of the Delta variants in England and uh, the notifications was on tw uh, 9th of June, uh, we will be able to uh, access to the workplace uh, about three weeks after the first case was identified. So when the outbreak was succeeded, um, but um, there were still positive cases identified. We use the company data to look at number of infectious cases 
over the one month outbreak period. And you can see um, this is the night shift workers infectious cases, and this is our day shift workers infectious cases. And night shift, night shift workers attack rates is nearly 5% higher than a day shift workers. And also, we can identify, for example, worker D1 uh, was the first confirmed cases in day shift worker. And this workers had a partner who was diagnosed with COVID-19 three days earlier who work in the night shift. So there's a potential transmission. And we also identify night shift workers. They have uh, close contact with infectious cases at home. And based on the genetic test, uh, we identify 64% of the cases were Delta variants infectious cases. And this is the diagram of the meat processing plan. And the gray area is production area. There's production A for packagings and production B. They're all very chill production areas. And the bottom part is the non-production areas, including canteen office, uh, changing rooms, and smoking areas. And here you can see, in the production area, there was only one air handling unit. But in this production area A, there were 21 air conditioning unit to keep the temperature very low. Um, there's no extraction system. But in the non-production area, there were two air handling unit. The different ventilation system were managed by two external contractors where the employers cannot control. Um, so in the production areas, there's very high occupancy level. It's very difficult to keep the physical distance. But at the same time, the protection is probably is in sufficient. They have uh, physical barriers. Um, they also ask workers to wear visor, compulsory uh, wearing visors, but only use fabric mask when physical distance cannot maintain. In the produ non-production areas, they have increased a lot of amenity areas to improve physical distancing. So our environmental measurements, real-time environmental measurements, show the high noise level in the production areas, over 80 D, uh, dBAs. And there's areas with very low temperature and high humidities, as low as 4.5 degrees. And in the non-production area, the ventilation seems quite sufficient, but in the Production areas, even though the CO2 measure level is very high, but we find out that CO2 was used in the packaging process, so we can't use the results to, to draw firm conclusions about the ventilation. And the employer didn't assess the ventilation, or they wasn't aware of the importance of ventilation in prevention of virus transmi transmission. And the surface sampling, um, 60 samples, just over one in 10 samples were test positive. And a cluster of positive sample in engineering workshop, which identify probably the presence of the infectious cases, but also the, the gap in cleaning. So in summary, um, there's a lot of work and non-work related risk factors. First of all, there's very high community transmission and it could be the introduction of the infectious cases into the workplace. And there are also a lot of close contacts of workers uh, to the infectious cases at home and at work. There's sh shared transportations, for example, 220 day shift workers and 120 night shift workers using company coach. And it's quite challenging to implement the control measures. First of all, the employer didn't understand how to assess the ventilation. And the, the face covering used and the screen may not be sufficient to prevent inhalation exposure. Um, 
It's also very challenging in the nature of work, for example, the high density of the workers and the unfavorable mix of environmental conditions. The control measure, actually, this workplace has quite done a quite a good job. First, in the non-production areas, the control measure is quite sufficient, but in the um, production areas, I think is the ventilation that is kind of a gap. But the uh, employers uh, had a proactive leadership. They provide supervisions to encourage uh, and monitor workers' compliance to various control measures, including early detections of infectious cases through workplace testing and contact tracing. They work with the local health protection specialists, implement workplace testing, and they also provide full pay for workers who need to self-isolate because they were infected with COVID-19 or, or have close contact with infectious cases. So in conclusions, our study illustrates the importance of site-specific risk assessments to inform choices made in a range of control measures, considering all routes of the virus transmission. Meat processing plants are part of the national essential infrastructure and could be developed and rehearsed uh, with the local public health and outbreak response plans for controlling future outbreaks and keep business operating. So even though this workplace have a large outbreak, they didn't stop the production because just one week temporary closure will have millions loss of revenue. So I think for this kind of sector, for f it's quite important to rehearse the outbreak controls for future pandemic or future outbreak situation. So I think that's th the end of my presentation.